Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. Buss, and I'm going to walk you through how to do Lab 2, Exploring Magnetism, Part 1. If you want your lab quest turned on, you'll want to have a magnetic field sensor. And this is important. There's a toggle switch here. And make sure the toggle switch is towards the 6.4 setting, not the 0 0.3 setting. Go ahead and plug in the magnetic field sensor. Just a couple things about this. Um, notice that it, it does bend, but only in one direction, kind of like your knee. Um, you can't bend it backwards. Well, you could physically force it backwards, but that would probably break it. So please don't do that. Um, it might or might not have a rubber cap on the end. That's just to prevent dirt from getting in there. And the magnetic field sensor um, makes readings this way. So whether it's pointed that way or that way, um, the magnetic field sensor operates receiving magnetic field lines um, at the end of it. All right, so let's take a look at our LabQuest device here. And you'll want to go ahead and um, set up the rate. This is time, make sure it's time based. The rate should be um, two. Get in there on that. All right, so two samples per second. And this will go for 10 seconds, so that looks okay. Two samples per second, 10 seconds. You'll want to take your uh, magnetic field sensor, kind of bend it at the 90 degree, and tape it to the table. Let me kind of show you what I mean. So tape it down so that the sensor end is actually pointed up towards the ceiling. Might need a couple pieces of tape to have it hold appropriately. Um, so that looks good. So it's pointed up. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take a bar magnet, and um, these bar magnets are pretty powerful. Um, every time they get dropped or put down hard on the table, they'll actually lose their power, so try not to drop them. And in fact, here's one that was dropped. They are fragile. They can snap in half even. Um, also, don't put them on your phone or on your iPad or on a credit card. That would be bad news. Go ahead and zero your sensor. So make sure the magnet's not by your sensor. Tap the screen and hit zero. It's going to keep fluctuating, but it'll be a better zero reading. I'll hit play on here. And I'm going to bring the south end of the magnet down towards the sensor, slowly to the sensor, and then away. And I did that over that 10 second period. I try to time it right. So there you go, there's my graph. Remember that we'll want this on our iPad. And if you remember how to do that, you're going to go home, hit connections, and there should be the QR code there. So I'll use the QR scanner on the iPad. Scan. Okay. It's good. I'm going to go ahead and screen the screenshot that. Okay, so that's the first part. And might as well just add that directly to trial one here. So I'll go ahead and add that photo that I just took in the camera roll there. Okay. And I would highly recommend doing this. Um, I would draw what just happened so that you can remember. So this was with the magnetic field sensor pointed up, and this is with the south end of the magnet going towards the magnetic field sensor. Certainly go ahead and draw that. That's, that could help you um, remember what's going on here. So let's do the next set. So go back to our little setup here. Um, we're going to take the north end of the magnet. Okay, so the north end of the magnet is going to be angled down. So go ahead and hit play over that 10 second time period. The north end of the magnet goes towards the magnetic field sensor and then away. And that should give you a negative reading. Dips below zero. Okay. On your iPad, you should have that. Go ahead and add that to the graph or to the to the report. So again, screenshot. Go ahead and add that. Okay, there it is. That's trial two. And again, I would highly recommend drawing what just happened. So pretty similar. If 
for that one you had the magnetic field sensor pointed up and you had the north side of it going towards. All right. Now for part three and four, let me just sketch it first. You're going to have the south side of the magnet, but you're going to have the magnetic field sensor angled down and away. And the magnetic field sensor will be angled down and away for trial four as well, and it'll be the north side. Okay, so I'll, I'll demo what I mean by that. Finishing up part one, you need to now angle this down. Okay, so now it's down towards the table. Okay, you'll want to probably re-zero that. So um, under the meter screen, which is that tap zero. Okay, we re-zeroed it because we're now pointed a different direction. Okay, and go ahead and hit play. Again, this is the south side of the magnet going towards the sensor with the sensor pointed down. Okay, and you know, as before, it should get, there's the new one there. Okay, if it ever doesn't auto scale, you can just double tap the screen; it should auto scale. So there's trial three. Okay, and then trial four. Almost done. Is go ahead and hit play. It's the north side of the magnet going down towards the magnetic field sensor with it pointed down. All right, so go ahead and add that. Again, it should just pop up on the screen. If it doesn't, you can refresh the screen. Go ahead and screenshot that. Add that to Notability. And now you've got your four graphs for part one. That completes part one then. You found that you got a positive reading in this situation, a negative reading in that situation, a negative reading, and then a positive reading. So depending on the orientation of the magnet, obviously the south side of the magnet is giving a positive reading when angled at the sensor, and the north side of the magnet is giving a negative reading when angled at the sensor. Of course, if you flip the sensor down, the south side will do the opposite, and the north side will do the opposite of what you would expect. All right, that ends part one. Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. Buss, and I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to do Lab 2 Exploring Magnetism Part 2. So you'll need a LabQuest device, magnetic field sensor, bar magnet, and a degree wheel. You don't have to cut it out. You can just simply tape it down like I did here. All right, go ahead and plug in your magnetic field sensor. You can keep the toggle switch at the 6.4 setting, not the 0 0.32 setting. You can go ahead and bend that 90 degrees. And how we're going to set this up then, let's set up the LabQuest first. This is going to be, instead of time-based, um, it's going to be, there we go, focus a little better. It's going to be events with entry, so go ahead and change that from time-based to events with entry. Okay. Enter the name as position and the units as zero. So the name is position. And the unit's not as zero, I'm sorry, but as degrees. Uh, I'll just hit DEG for degrees. So, okay. So that's set up. I'll put this here so we can see it as we run the experiment here. You're going to want to take your bar magnet, and if you remember from the lab you did for part one of this lab that the south end of the magnet is positive and north end is negative. Well, we want the positive end, the south end, kind of positioned at the 90 degree mark there. And you'll take your magnetic field sensor and go ahead and have it pointing at zero. So you can kind of hold it vertically, but remember that the pointer should be at zero. 
All right. You can kind of see that there. So let's go ahead and while it's in this position, let's zero it. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and take our data. And you're going to take the data um, as events with entry at each degree mark. So I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to hit keep. And I'm going to enter this as zero. It says position, what's your position in degrees? The position is zero. Okay. And go ahead and rotate over to the 15 degree mark. So I just rotated it over slightly, 15 degrees. I'm going to hit the keep. And I'm going to type in that the degrees are 15. Okay. Then I'm going to rotate it over to 30. You can see what I'm doing there. So I just rotate it over to the 30. I'm going to go ahead and hit keep. And I'm going to type 30. I could keep doing this as a demonstration all the way around. I think you get it. Um, the idea is that as this rotates around, um, and you're hitting these events with entry as keep, as it's going towards the magnet, it's going to increase in reading, and as it goes away from the magnet, it's going to decrease in reading. And you can kind of see that that's started a little bit there with the first three readings. All right. Switch the setting to 0 0.32. Take the magnetic field sensor and the LabQuest device, and while looking at the LabQuest device, go ahead and rotate around the room 360 degrees nice and slow. Observe where the reading is the highest and where it's the lowest. Do the same thing by angling the magnetic field sensor down towards the earth and then also up and away. In doing this, try to find the location of earth's strongest magnetic field. The earth is uh, as it revolves once a year around the sun, it also rotates on a daily basis, one, ro one rotation. Um, that point right there on its imaginary axis is true north and true south. So true north has to deal with um, this point right here on the Earth's axis. Well, what is magnetic north then? What is a magnet pointing to? Because a magnet, uh, a compass, doesn't point towards true north. It points towards magnetic north. That's the idea that in the core of the earth, which is made up of iron and nickel, metal, the inner core is solid, but the outer core is liquid, and it is because of that liquid nature and the fact that the liquid is going through movements, convection. Think of a lava lamp heating up from the bottom and rising and then cooling and so on. These convection currents in the inner core, in the outer core of the earth, cause a magnetic field that extends way into outer space. All right, so magnetic north is in the core, and true north is at the axis. All right, so if you have a needle or compass needle, which is really a magnet suspended here, and if you just want to check and see which end of the compass are we dealing with, yeah, I'll bring a little bar magnet here. The north end of the compass points north. Wait a minute. The north end of the compass, shouldn't that point south and the south end of the compass point north because of the fact that opposites attract. Well, what that's telling me is the north pole is actually a south pole magnet. Because if you just let a compass find its own way, the north end points north, which really means that our north pole, magnetic pole at least, is a south pole magnet. That's one of the questions I think you have to answer.